Have you always wanted to create a Discord bot but didn't know where to start? Do you want to show off to your friends by adding your own custom bot to your servers? Look no further because today I'll be showing you the easy way to make a Discord bot and even host it for free. Let's jump right in. So the first thing you want to do is visit the Discord developers page. So click this link and then you're going to click applications. If you're not already signed in, then just sign in and you should see this page. I have a bunch of different old applications, so you might not have anything if you've never created anything for Discord. So on the top right of the page, click new application. And then for name, just give it any name you want. So for this, I'll just make it testbot3. And then click this and click create. So then it'll direct you to this page. On the left, you'll see a tab that's called bot. Click on that. If you want to give your bot a profile picture, you can add it here. This picture is the one that will show up as the profile picture for your Discord bot in the server user list and whenever it sends a message. If you want to make your bot private, uncheck the public bot option. The public bot option means that anyone can add your bot to their server. I'm just going to keep it as public, but for your purposes, you can change it to private. The next step is to copy your bot's token and then keep it somewhere safe. So for token, you might have view token or reset token, but click it here. It might ask you for an authentication code. So if you have two factor enabled, just put it in. So I want to put it in here. Okay, after that, it'll generate a new token and you want to copy this token and then save it somewhere because we'll need this for the app later on. Let's invite our newly created bot to our server. So what you're going to want to do is head over to the OAuth 2 tab on the left right above bot. Once you click that, you'll see two submenus and go ahead and click URL generator. This is where you will choose what access the bot will have on your server. And then you'll see all of the permissions that the bot can have. Giving it an administrator permission will encompass all permissions, but is generally unsafe because if someone hacks your bot, they will be able to do more damage to your server. For the purpose of this video, these are the permissions that I'll be using. So let's go ahead and check all of them. Let me uncheck administrator and then we can check the permissions that I'll be using. So do manage roles, manage channels. Then we also want read messages and view channels. Then send messages, create public threads, private threads, send messages in threads, manage messages, manage threads, embed links, attach files read message history, use external emojis, add reactions, and use slash commands. Now under voice permissions, I'm just going to give it connect and speak. So that's it. Those are the permissions that the bot will have. So after you do that, all the way at the bottom, you'll see a URL. You're going to copy this URL and paste it in your browser. You'll see this page, an external application testbot3 wants to access your Discord account. So now just select the server you want to add your bot in. And you need to be one of the administrators of that server to be able to add the bot. So I'm going to add it to my community server server and then hit continue and then you'll see that it's confirming all of these permissions that you set and we're going to click authorize and it might ask you for a captcha so just do that and then boom it says authorized and now you'll see your bot in the server so i'm going to head over to my server and now you'll see test bot 3 just slid into the server so that means it's added there we go we're halfway there for the second half of the video, I'll be showing you how you can add functionality for the bot. On my blog, I have a link for the code to the bot we'll be using for the video. You can then use this bot as a starting point and build upon it, adding any functionality you want. The language I'll be using for this is JavaScript since Discord is web-based. You are free to do whatever you want with this code. This bot has a couple of basic commands to get you started. I'll also show you how to add your own command. So to get this code, head on over to my Discord bot template repo. Now let's clone the code. So click on the green code button and then you're going to click copy. I'm already assuming that you know how to clone repos from GitHub. If you don't, I have a link in the description that teaches you how to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my documents folder and let's just get clone and then the URL. So now if I go into Discord bot template, you can see that we have the code in there. Now I'm going to open it in VS Code. Okay, there we go. So I have the code now on my local computer. The next thing to do is install all of the necessary npm packages. So go to your terminal and type npm install. After this command finishes running, you should see a node modules folder and then a package lock.json file added to your bot directory. This means we have all the necessary packages. The next thing you're going to have to do for this setup is add a .env file. This env file is the file that's going to hold your secret credentials like the bot token and the client ID. Click here and then let's create a new file. You're going to create a file called .env and this file is going to contain two variables. The first one is called client underscore token. So just type client underscore token and then equals. And then the second one is going to be client ID. So for client token, you're going to paste that token that you copied earlier for the bot. There we go. And then don't put any semicolon at the end or anything. Just keep it like this. 
Now for client ID, you're gonna go back to the Discord developer portal and we're gonna copy this application ID. So head back to your .env file and then paste that. And that's gonna be the client ID. Make sure that you finish the quote here. Now all you have to do is save that file and we're ready to test it out. Open your terminal back up again. And now all you're gonna do is type node and app.js. So if everything goes well, you should see started refreshing one application commands, successfully reloaded one application commands, and then ready logged in as testbot. Once that's running, you'll actually see that your bot is online on your server. So if you type slash and then click on our test bot, you'll see that it has one command slash meme. If you click on that and press enter, the test bot will send a random meme into the channel. So there we go. That's the meme. Buying a game in 2023 be like. To add your own command, we are going to create a subfolder for that command under our commands folder. Name this what you want your command to be. For this example, I'll be adding a poll function to our bot. This will allow the user to start a poll using the bot. Let's create a poll subfolder. Under commands, right click create new folder and then we're going to call this poll. In this poll subdirectory, we're going to create a new file and then call this poll as well and give it the javascript extension .js. So I'm going to use our get meme file as a template for our poll command. So let's just copy all that over. Under dot set name, we're going to change this command to poll. And then you can also change the description to something like creates a poll. And then let's get rid of all of this in the execute block. This poll command will actually be a little more complex than the meme command, since we're going to be adding an extra parameter to our slash command. So to do that, let's continue building our slash command. So get rid of this comma, and then we're going to do dot add string option. And then we're going to pass it in a function returns option. And then let's set the name for this option. So you're going to type option dot set name. And then we're going to call this title for the pull title and then dot set description for this. And we can type the title to use for the poll. And then we want to set this parameter as required. So do dot set required and then pass in true. And that's going to make sure that this slash pull command will always take this title parameter. Now that we're done with building that extra parameter, add the comma back in. So our execute block is the block that will contain all of our logic. And you can see that it has a parameter called interaction. This interaction object allows us to reply and then get the extra parameters from the command. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get the title parameter. So get our title string and you want to type const title equals interaction dot options get string and then title. So this is going to store whatever the user puts in for title into this title variable. Now we want to build the poll string from that. So we're going to make another variable called poll string, set it equal to this string. So poll colon and then our title variable, a new line, and then to vote, select check mark emoji for yes, and then the red cross emoji for no. And with VS Code, you can just paste it in and it actually, we can use emojis in our code, which is funny. Now that we built our poll string, let's make the final variable which is going to be called poll. And we're going to set this equal to the message that the bot will send. So we're going to do interaction dot reply. And we're going to want to add an item called content and set that to poll string. And then another one called fetch reply and then set that to true. Basically, what this will do is it will store the reply in this poll variable. So then we can manipulate it and we need this to be able to add reactions to the message. So our final step is to react with these two emojis so people can vote. So let's do react with yes or no emoji. And then we're going to do poll dot react. Then you can copy this emoji and set it to a string. Copy that emoji in there. And then the same one for the X. OK, there we go. Oh, and then we can also get rid of the Axios requirement since we're not using that. Now, since our app JS and our deploy commands already contains all the code needed to auto detect any new commands that we add, all you have to do is run node app.js again, and it will have your newly added command. So let's test it out. Let's end our node process and then type node app.js again. And you'll see now that our terminal says starting refreshing two application commands and successfully reloaded two application commands. And if we go back to our discord server, you can see that our bot is online. And if we type slash and then click on our bot, you'll see our second option right here, pull. So let me click on it. And when I click on it, you can see that title is required. So I'm just going to type test poll title. Now, when I press enter, you can see that the bot replied with a message in the channel. OK, so for some reason, the reaction didn't work. And I think I know why. Let's go back to our code and then we just need to add an await here. So we need to wait for it to actually finish. So save that. Let's restart it again. 
and then let's try it again. So slash poll and then test poll title. And then boom, there we go. You can see that it creates a poll and then with the title, then it says to vote, select the check mark for yes and the X for no. And you can see that it starts it. So users can actually click on this and vote. For now, the poll will only have yes or no responses for simplicity. For a challenge, you can add a parameter to change the type of poll. As an additional challenge, try to add a parameter called time that will expire the poll, then print out the final votes. So that's how you would add an additional command to your bot. The possibilities are endless. Comment down below if you need any help with a specific implementation. Now, the final part. How do you host this bot for free? The simplest way is to have your app running 24 seven on your local computer. The only problem with this is that you will have to run your computer 24 seven. There is a better way to do this, which I have on my blog, but for this video, I'll be showing you how to self host. If you run node app.js and keep your computer on, this will work for a bit. But if your bot has an error, it will shut down and you would have to restart it manually. To fix this issue, I will show you how to automatically restart your bot if it crashes. All you have to do is install a package called nodemon. So you can see it on the npm directory here. To do this, open your terminal and type npm install dash g and then nodemon. So dash g makes it global, which means you can use it no matter what directory you're in and press enter. After this installs, instead of doing node app.js, you can type nodemon app.js and then this will start your app in a continuous loop so if it ever crashes it will just restart it and as long as you keep your terminal open your bot will run indefinitely there are also ways to do this in the background which i also have on my blog so yeah that's how you would create your own bot and host it for free if you learned something and or enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and a comment and also subscribe for more tutorials like this thanks for watching